aspects of a Gothic cathedral. So in a sense, this is very similar to the question from exam number two, in which I ask you to talk about two architectural examples from ancient Rome. Um, this time I provide exactly what I uh, want to hear though. I wanna either hear about the pointed arches and ribbed vaults, or pointed arches and flying buttresses, or ribbed vaults and flying buttresses. So you just need to pick two um, and have a handle on two of those. So discuss why they are important to the stru structure of the Gothic cathedral, why did Gothic architects use them, um, how do they contribute to the overall look and symbolism of the Gothic cathedral, and choose examples. So let's start examining those right now. We will return to them, of course. So let's, let me find a really good example of pointed arches. Of course, Leon Cathedral, all of these Gothic cathedrals are going to employ these pointed arches. And here's a diagram. So this again shows you the difference between these vaulting systems from the Romanesque into the Gothic. So with this first diagram, you see the Romanesque arches. You're still seeing a groin vault. It's the intersection of two barrel vaults. So it's still that cross vault, and that's what creates the opening here, as well as the opening on the side, but you can see that they're rounded. So what happens when they're rounded is that these arches are typically shorter. It's harder to get those arches to be the same height throughout the structure, and it creates a square bay, or it's still rectangular, um, but it's not as elongated as the bay that you see within the Gothic structure. With the Gothic structure, rather than a rounded arch, you're getting a pointed arch. So rather than that keystone set in the very center, uh, you're going to get two voussoirs set side by side at an angle that helps to create that pointing. And again, as you can see with the diagram, what this allows is for a taller arch, a more systematic approach to those arches so that they can all be the same size, and you get a more efficient lateral transmission of pressure. So where that downward and outward pressure, especially that downward pressure hits at the keystone and then is transmitted along those voussoirs, what you see with the pointed arch is it's set at that point and then it's transmitted through each of those voussoirs immediately and into the ground. So this is much closer to one of the strongest shapes within engineering, which is the triangle. So, and it's just because again with that, that wider base and the pointed top, that allows that downward and outward pressure to be transferred very efficiently through the side and into that wider base. So essentially that's what you're getting here. With the rounded arch, you're still getting that wider top and it's not as efficient. With the pointed top, you get a much more direct transference of that pressure into the widened bottom. And the bottom is able to be wider. Um, you see a longer rectangle here um, within this diagram. So that's something that we get with these pointed arches structurally. They are more efficient. Because of that efficiency, they are stronger. And so this is one of the reasons that these Gothic architects take that rounded arch and evolve it, they change it, they perfect it. In addition, this does something visually on the interior, um, and this is very much related to what these pointed arches can do symbolically. Uh, this is my own shot, which is not very good, so I'm not gonna rest there for very long. Let's look at the interior shot in Shard Cathedral. So what happens with these pointed arches is it creates what? A point, <laughs> an arrow upward, right? So when you get into these spaces, not only are these Gothic cathedrals taller, but they look taller because of those visual points. So you're very right, it seems very redundant, but it creates a point. 
And it's like pointing with your finger. It draws your eye upward. It makes you notice the elevation. And why would that be symbolic? Big guy. Uh -huh. Towards heaven. You know, these are just like any of these Christian churches. They are rep meant to represent these houses of God on earth. So reaching towards the heavens becomes something very symbolic. So this is why they're getting taller, but also why they want them to look taller as well. This is an important element with Gothic architecture. There is a focus on height and a focus on light. If you remember anything from this lecture in regards to Gothic, it is those two rhyming words, height and light. So there's gonna be a focus on elevation, things being taller than ever before, and this new type of light that can be flooded into the space. You can also see that these vaults have become ribbed, which means you can actually see the definition of the skeletal structure, if you will, of the vault. So rather than, let's see an example of a non-ribbed vault was Fire Cathedral. So in between here, you can still see the outline of the vault, but there's not additional stone. There's not additional material that follows that vault line. With a ribbed vault, you get the inclusion of additional stone that follows that vault line. So this too, it's additional stone, so it helps to strengthen it, but it creates lines. So that also draws your eye upward. So again, just like the pointed arches, there's a structural element to it, but there's also this visual kind of symbolic element to it as well. <coughs> and then flying buttresses. We already talked about those ad nauseum, um, but to show you again. These are these half arms or these half arches, and they connect the outer wall with larger outer piers. So that helps to support the, the wall on the exterior. Because any time, and I've already mentioned that these Gothic cathedrals are getting taller and taller and taller, any time you make a structure taller, it needs more support. So that's how um, the efficiency of those pointed arches comes into play. Why, well, why the additional stone on that ribbing comes into play because that's supportive as well. And especially those flying buttresses on the exterior, it holds up those walls. It helps us support those taller walls. In addition, light. Light's so important. This is the difference between the Romanesque and the Gothic, the inclusion of those stained glass windows that become larger and larger, more and more and more. Until you have Gothic architects who are seeing what stone can we remove or how much stone can we remove and replace with windows. How they're able to do that is through these technologies. The fact that they have strengthened the roof through the more efficient pointed arch the additional support that you get with the ribbing and the additional support that you get on the exterior with flying buttresses. This is how these buildings stay up and how they're able to be so tall, so that emphasis on height and that emphasis on light. So this is why it's important to use those technologies. This is how those technologies are used and that's how it's contributing to the overall all look and symbolism. The last possible essay discussed